Marine Toys for Tots program has been in existence for 66 years. Uh, the first campaign was conducted in Los Angeles, California in 1947, and over the years the program has grown dramatically. I had an idea uh, to distribute Toys for Tots. I was with the railroad superintendent, and I asked him, I said, if I could talk to the Marine Corps and they could get us toys, can I have a train to distribute them? And he said yes. Billy Neary knows me through another mutual friend, and he had an idea for helping out the Marines. He said, uh, what, what can we do to help out? We started out that year uh, with, I believe, about 800 to 1,000 toys, and we just went from the Albany area up to Plattsburgh. And we did that for a few years, and it's since grown to what you've seen from Binghamton all the way up to Albany, and then from Albany all the way up to Rouse's Point. It's a uh, great event to actually reach out and, and see um, some of the people that are actually receiving the toys. We actually load up uh, toys on a uh, donated train from Amtrak and Canadian Pacific Railroad and uh, actually make stops um, along the route to uh, deliver toys. The recession's been difficult across the country for five years now, longer. Uh, families are working as hard as they can to survive and uh, sometimes by purchasing new coats, maybe the kids receiving some gifts, takes some pressure off families during the holidays and uh, you hope that they can have a nice season with their children and people need help right now. It's a difficult time. Our son was a Marine. He was killed in Iraq in 2007. And at one of the dedications that they had for my son, they invited us on the Toys for Tots train that year to help them give out toys. We didn't have a name, we didn't have any intention of continuing. We thought it was going to be a one-time thing. We were going to get on the train and pass out these blankets. Well, we got on the train and we saw the amount of children that met the train and we were overwhelmed with the need. Well, one little boy came up to me and he was in jeans and a pair of sneakers and a sweatshirt and there was snow on the ground and he was shivering and he had a toy that the Marines had given him under his arm and he said to me, if I give you this toy, could I get a blanket? Well, it broke my heart to think that a child would be willing to trade maybe his only toy because he needed a blanket so desperately. I knew about the train for the first uh, 10 years and didn't really think much of it and when I got the first opportunity to see it firsthand, it was, uh, it changes, it changes you. Um, you get to see what you're doing to help families. Uh -huh. Little kids, in, you know, in the cold. Sorry. Being able to impact someone's life, and the first time that I was able to give a kid a toy, and he rejected that toy for a coat, or for, for the gloves. They need to have people like us out there to do that. And that was my aha moment. When that kid said, thank you, but no thanks, can I have the coat? We need to do something. It's easy, you're buying toys, they, they go straight to where they're intended to go. You know, don't have to worry so much about uh, where donations are going or misuse of donations. Our role with Toys or Tots specifically is that we help collect some toys. Last year we filled 13 school buses uh, full of toys in the effort to uh, distribute toys across the state and also in the local capital region. Uh, additionally, we help distribute the codes, but Dunkin' Donuts has purchased and has done a lot uh, to help needy families in this effort. It is a simple task to give someone a blanket. However, when you wrap a blanket around these children, you're giving them a warm hug and a feeling of security, and you're also giving them something that's theirs and all theirs. And that's important uh, for children, especially children in need, who sometimes don't have things that belong to them. And this blanket gives them a sense of security and belonging and something that's theirs to keep. And this is one of the things that coordinators uh, will, will often tell me and, and people who have volunteered for a number of years that they never really view Christmas morning the same way because they realize that all around their city or town 
there are less fortunate children that are enjoying Christmas that otherwise would not have had that opportunity to do so. So it, it has a huge impact certainly on those that participate. As far as the recipients, um, you know, oftentimes people think that the children know that the Marine Corps caused this to happen. Well, to be honest with you, we really don't care about that. In fact, ideally, what we want the child to think is either that Santa Claus didn't forget them, or two, that even though things may be tough around the house because maybe dad's been laid off or something like that, that mom and dad are still able to provide gifts to the children at Christmas time. I think it's good for all corporations to have a community involvement, a community connection, seeing the, seeing the result at the end, seeing the delivery of the toys to the kids. Even when we brought the scouts in to help package and bag the toys, you know, being part of something. It's such a direct connection to, to the end result. It's just a good thing to do. We couldn't do it without the sponsorship, we couldn't do it without the volunteers, but we couldn't do it without corporate support to get the transportation assets, Fryhoffers with the trucks, Dunkin' Donuts with money and their support. But basically when we deliver these toys early on in the Christmas season, we haven't had a lot of time to actually collect toys. So there's a lot of toys that the coordinator goes out and purchases them and then we fill those needs in the community with that money. So without that, we couldn't run this train at, at this early stage of Christmas.